Fox River is about 23 miles long. It starts at a place called Valhalla, New York, which is just a bit north of White Plains. It flows southward past White Plains, Hartsdale, Scarsdale, Eastchester, Tuckahoe, Bronxville, Mount Vernon, and its final eight miles are in the Bronx borough of New York City. Over time, colonization and industrialization have affected the river. It's gone from an area, the watershed has gone from an area covered in forests to an area covered in buildings for the most part. And a few of the obstacles along the Bronx River include dams, which are physical barriers, the presence of industries along the river, as well as infrastructure like the railroad, the parkway, um, and sewer infrastructure. So for example, you have industries that, especially historically, have dumped their waste into the river. Um, the sewer systems discharge, on occasion, raw sewage into the Bronx River, which takes away the community's ability to enjoy it. So there's different levels to how marine life is affected by pollution. Um, you have the more obvious um, choking on debris, getting trapped in debris. So if we have too much sewage pollution in the Bronx River, you wind up with fish physically dying because there's not enough oxygen in the water for them. Um, however, in the 1970s, community members from right around here in the South Bronx got tired of the river being treated so poorly. So they put on protective clothing, banded together and went into the water to take out some of that trash. They were pulling out cars, tires, mattresses, you name it. Um, they formed a group called the Bronx River Reserva Restoration that eventually grew into today's Bronx River Alliance that's been around since 2001. When we look at pictures from the past, you can see a physical difference. If you were to look at Starlight Park, in 1970 versus how it looks today you wouldn't recognize we've had community members come visit us and say you know i grew up here it looks so different you know it's a really cool building though it's a green building yeah. so for example the vines on the outside help keep the building cool during the summer and we have solar panels on the roof and then when it rains the pavement is designed so the rainwater goes into the ground and we reuse it to like flush our toilets um i've seen people fishing over here um, most of the time I see people just sitting and relaxing, meditating. Um, we test the water for different variables such as nitrates, dissolved oxygen levels that are sort of um, the parameters that tell us how healthy the river is. Volunteers physically get into the water and pick up trash. Um, it's, we have a boom, which is a floating barrier set up near 233rd Street, and you can see all the plastic and other debris built up on the boom. We offer volunteer opportunities such as tree planting and litter pickup. We offer water quality monitoring opportunities. Any interest has a place here at the Bronx River Alliance. We've seen a lot of animals enjoying the river. You know, things are really looking up. A lot of students grew up in the Bronx and didn't know there was a river here. And then once they learn about the river, they're like, oh, I want to know more. And because they want to know more, they'll come out to internship days. They'll come out even on volunteer day when they don't have to. Um, and they're motivated because they do see the changes. Just something to keep in mind is um, there's a lot of treasures like right outside your door no matter where you live. There's always something really cool nearby. And, you know, never lose the sense of adventure. You know, you don't have to go to Arizona to go on a nature adventure. You can enjoy it right out here. And I would encourage anyone to take advantage of that.